What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, we're building exhaust. Stay tuned. I gotta do it. I gotta go full road warrior today. I have to drive all the way across Portland one way and then I gotta come back and go all the way across Portland the other way, but it's gotta be done. So I'm on my way right now to uh, GBE mandrel bending in Clackamas to get some uh, stainless steel. We need two and a half inch stainless steel uh, bends, straights, joins, and a flex piece. So I'm gonna head out there right now. Hopefully we'll get lucky and they'll have everything we need. First stop was a huge success. GBE mandrel bending had absolutely everything that I was looking for to build this system. So no excuses, we have all the materials that we need. I did just remember that I left the mufflers at home, so that's a little bit more driving that we're gonna do. But we're hooked up here. So next stop, I'm going to a Dotson specialty shop to hope that they have the parts lying around that we would like to get. I'm trying to get a new passenger side fender and maybe even a driver's side door. Let's get down there and see what they have. That was a classic case of so close, but so far they had like a perfect, not perfect, I mean, pretty rough, but well well used, well worn fender. And the guy thought it was a passenger side fender, so we pulled it out of storage and it turned out to be a driver's side. So we didn't get a fender. Um, he does have a door if I do want to uh, come down, come back down there and buy the door off of him so we don't have to spend the time doing the body work on mine. But I'm gonna take another look at it and see how bad it is before I do that. Now it's time to go to our shop. All right, we're back in the shop, and since we're working on exhaust, the first thing we gotta do is get these exhaust manifolds off so we can modify them, so we can fit. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the heat shield off and then unscrew the exhaust manifolds on both the passenger and driver's side. Got both the exhaust manifolds off, they're right there and there. Eric's preparing the uh, bandsaw with a new blade um, to do some cutting on these things. And we'll see how that goes. We've got an idea for what we're gonna do. While I was under there on the driver's side, I actually found out something pretty interesting. So I was looking at how to detach the power steering line, which I thought, um, I thought it connected in right, can't even see my hand, where's my hand? Ah, right there. Um, but it actually does this weird loop. So the power steering pump is right there. And it runs back underneath the exhaust manifold, runs all the way back underneath a, um, a heat shield. And then it runs down from there, and then it runs back and it goes forward. So I'm going to try disconnecting the soft line right there, see if we can make a nice gradual bend and bring it back to our, um, uh, our steering rack. So the reason, if you guys don't remember, obviously, we, the engine used to sit here, the steering rack used to be over here, and then that line would connect in easily. But then we moved our steering rack and our front subframe up, like half of an engine distance and that's why we're farther away. But if we could make this work, it would mean that we would not have to get a custom power steering line made and that would be epic. Great news on the power steering line. Uh, with that wraparound, there's like plenty of real estate. So uh, I ran down and bought some new crush washers for the banjo bolts because the previous owner of this thing undid all this stuff and never put it back the right way. So anyways, I got that all straightened out uh, and I'm gonna attach that to the uh, steering rack and then I'll uh, move the line and relocate it in a safe spot away from the exhaust manifold. And meanwhile, Eric's working on the exhaust manifolds and he, um, we trimmed out our catalytic converter because there's not enough space. That made it shoot downwards too far into the ground. So we got rid of that. So we still have the O2 sensor upstream, like the first O2 sensor, and then remove the cat and then that goes down to the two and a half inch. And then from here, it'll start our two and a half inch exhaust. So Eric's gonna go ahead and uh, weld these up right now while I finish the power steering line.
Eric welded up the exhaust manifold and we threw it in the car and I tightened down the power steering line. So power steering line is done, remarkably enough. It just goes through there, wraps around right there, runs underneath and comes back right there. We have power steering. So that's, oh, well, we still need the reservoir and some other things, but we are a lot, lot closer. I don't have to go get a custom hydraulic line made, which is awesome. So um, the exhaust manifold comes down to right here and I wanna give you guys kind of a, uh, like an outline of what we're gonna build. Um, it's gonna come straight from there, underneath here. Once we get to here, we're gonna go into an X pipe that's gonna live right around here. So X pipe goes that way, that way. X pipes uh, theoretically improve performance because um, as one cylinder bank is firing and it's shooting across, it has a Venturi kind of a suction from the other end and it helps pull the exhaust from the other bank as the other bank is firing, I believe is how it works. So it's probably a very rudimentary, like simplistic way of explaining it. But um, I do believe they get, give performance improvements and this car I think has one stock. So we wanted to build one. So we're gonna hand build one. We'll show you that tomorrow. Through there, through there. And then as it comes out on both sides, it's gonna go underneath that channel straight out to the back and into these two things. So this is a resonator that's gonna help quiet it down a little bit, two and a half inch stainless steel resonator. And into this, uh, this is a Gretti RS, I think it's an RS Evolution. It's just a universal stainless steel uh, muffler. Um, and then that should get us straight out the back around here. And then remember we're building a whole diffuser system on the back here that will kind of enclose um, the, the muffler and everything and kind of make it look at home in the back there. And to connect all that up, we have the stuff that we bought at GBE. So we have things like our flex joint, that's gonna go right after the exhaust manifold. That's gonna absorb some of the shake and the wobble of the engine going back into our exhaust system. And then we have our joins, uh, cause we gotta be able to have the exhaust be detachable obviously. And this is a Marmon joint. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an old school piece of technology that was kind of lost throughout history and uh, GBE brought it back. I believe they're the only people making these nowadays. And these things, do not leak. They are awesome um, and uh, they don't leak. If you have a V-band system on your on your car or something and it leaks, look into these, look at the GBE's website, which I'll put a link in the description. Check these out. We use these on the Mustang and they do not leak, I'm telling you. Uh, but the V-bands we used on the Mustang did leak. So yeah, uh, so we're gonna run those as our connecting joints and then we have our 45s and our, our 90s and our, and our 15s to get us around and through there in our straights. So, unfortunately, that's the game plan, and we're gonna bust that out very quickly tomorrow, but unfortunately, Eric is not feeling well today, so he had to jet. So I'm gonna continue working on some stuff over here um, since we've got the space. So I think something good for me to do next would be to finally mount that pillow block bearing that goes right here. It's gonna hang on to this steering rod so it can't move at all, and that will finalize our steering system, and I'll actually be able to crank the wheels back and forth. So I got the pillow block bearing in there and I did it a little bit differently than we had planned. We had planned on mounting it kind of horizontally in here like that. And instead I flipped it upside down, put it underneath our motor mount, uh, put one hole in the motor mount here with a bolt going through it. And then I welded a stud on the motor mount right here in the front, the bolt going down. So it's got both the bolts in there and it's looking good, but I'm gonna need to throw the steering wheel on and, and give it a shot with uh, moving it back and forth just to make sure it's not gonna bind up on us because that is now kind of sitting on the plane that the motor mount is and this is a different plane so I wanna make sure that they're not gonna fight each other. That's a win! She's steering smoothly, smooth as butter. That's a pretty good angle on those wheels right there. Like I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that steering rack's ability to create angle and with nothing to pinch onto. We may have to get this thing sliding one day. We will actually. It's not meant to be a drift car, but there's a track around me that's pretty safe. So I think we're gonna have to take it out and, and rip some tires off of it this winter. Oh man, I'm glad that came out that way. So that's a lot like cleaner um, than what we're gonna do. And it's also a lot safer because I can quickly jump underneath there, inspect anything. We got Loctite bolts on there. Not Loctite, but nylock nuts on the bottoms of those bolts and everything. So that's good.
All right, I've been sitting here futzing over the uh, uh, coolant reservoir for a while now, trying to figure out how I want to mount it and if I want to mount it tonight. I'm getting pretty tired, um, but I've decided I'm going to go for it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to tack it up. I'm just going to lightly tack it up, and then uh, when Eric gets here tomorrow, we'll talk about it, see if we like the design. I'm going to basically do it and then sleep on it and double check that I like it in the morning before it gets all the way welded up, and then that would be an Eric job because it is pretty visible in the engine bay, so I want it nicely TIG welded. The idea. It's going to be at a slight slant downwards like this. Um, that's going to be totally on purpose. Uh, the tab right there will go to that bar right there. That tab right there will go to that bar right there. And then underneath there is a post. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing with the camera right now. There's a post that you can see right there. It's that thing right there. That is going to have a rod that goes down to the frame rail. Now I've checked the uh, tire clearance and everything like that. It's close to the tire, you know, but it's going to be far enough away that it won't hit anything. Uh, it lets us run our OEM. Uh, line from the engine straight to the reservoir and then we'll extend these two lines that come um, in right here So I'm basically going to try and set it as low as I can while still allowing these lines to clear that pipe That way our hood and our service hatch and all our other good stuff can get over it So I'm going to build it up and we'll see how it goes I got it mounted up. I burnt the crap out of my finger TIG welding there at the end, but um, other than that, it's it's pretty well in there. The tabs the tabs are a little dorky. They kind of like, you know, they kind of stand out a little bit, but you know, we only have two mounting points. We have here and here, and then we have down there. So I don't really see any other way to really do that in a different way. Um, but once you consider that the fender is going to go till you know right about there, anyways, um, it'll cover a lot of that stuff up. And I think from these angles, it looks much better. But if you look at it from like the worst angle, it is, it is a little bit dorky. But hey, it gets it at the right thing. It's a, it's a great shot straight to our radiator, just barely above that, that thing and high enough that it's the highest point. It's higher than the engine. It's higher than everything else, which is another very, very important thing. We don't want another fiasco like the Mustang. Actually, the Mustang never had cooling issues. What was the car? Oh, it was a BRZ where we didn't have any uh, our reservoir high enough up. Um, so that was something that was really important for me too. This is actually high enough up that it's going to be, it, it may get in the way of mounting the uh, accessory flap. Anyways, I'm digging it, but it's tack welded in there. So if uh, Eric comes up with any better ideas or you guys come up with better ideas tomorrow, we could always cut it off and rebuild it. But I wanted to make sure we got that done tonight. So it's done. All right, guys, well, that radiator reservoir is one big step closer towards getting the coolant system to be a closed loop. And then we're really close to getting the power steering system to be a closed loop too, which means we can run the engine as long as we want to, which is really cool. So that's it. That's a wrap for tonight. We had a bit of a hiccup with Eric not feeling well. He had a migraine. So Eric, I hope you're feeling better tomorrow and we're going to bust out that exhaust. That's the game plan. Exhaust and getting the engine to run longer. I want to be able to rev this car out and let you guys know what the exhaust is going to sound like. That's the game plan. So thank you for watching today. If you want to help out and you want to support, head over to bsforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop, picking up any of the merchandise there, all the proceeds go directly towards this. If you're not in the mood for merchandise and you're in the mood for gaming, head over to dsfordrift.com. It's our own game. I helped create it and any of the proceeds of playing that game, it's a free game by the way, but any of the proceeds of that, if you do some in-app purchases or something, you want to get some extra cars or whatever, they go to the game developers and this build as well. So that's a pretty cool way to do that. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace! Come on.